Hello everyone, this is Nice on Masters is about here, and today I'll be talking about how to deliver checkmate with bishop and knight against a lone king. Now this endgame is quite commonly known to be a tricky endgame uh, to uh, deliver checkmate with, and many times it ends in a draw when in reality it is completely winning uh, for the side that has the knight and bishop of course. Uh, now this endgame requires a bit of technique, unlike other Mm, such simplistic end games with reduced material material on the board, and it is also quite harder to, um, to deliver checkmate due to the 50 move rule, uh, in which is stated that if uh, if a game prolongs for a period of more than 50 moves without a pawn move uh, being made or a pawn capture being made, the game is declared a draw. So in this end game, uh, there are no pawns for either side, so you must deliver checkmate in less than 50 moves. This many times is what leads players to uh, confuse themselves and the game ends up in a draw. Now, in this video I'll be showing you three key steps to in order to deliver this checkmate. And if you can achieve these three steps and understand them, I guarantee you, you'll be checkmating your opponents all the time and you'll be winning this completely one end game all the time, which is what should happen. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to corner the black king on the opposite colored corner to your bishop. So in this case we have a light square bishop. So we want to corner the black king on the dark square uh, corner, which is called the wrong corner. Now why is it called wrong corner? Because you cannot actually deliver checkmate on this corner. If, if we have a position where our king is, for example, where all of our pieces are really tying down the black king on the h8 square, and the black king can't move or is very much tied down, there is no way to actually deliver checkmate without it being a stalemate first. So why do we want to drag the king there? Well, we'll see. So we start out with king d2, king d7. These are moves are, no, are in no particular order and there's a lot of ways to get the black king to the uh, dark square, the wrong corner. This is just a random series of moves where a white activates all these pieces and just uh, forces the black king onto the dark square corner. So king e7, bishop b5, king f8, king f6, king g8, knight g5, king h8. We have quite easily managed to get the black king onto the dark square corner. Now what we want to do next is the second step, which is to set up the w maneuver with the knight. Now, this is the technique that I was referring to, and it is, well, you must know this in order to deliver this checkmate. It is a very useful technique as, well, it it works in sort of a geometrical way, and if you know this technique, you won't have to figure it out on the board, which reduces the chances of you spoiling the game and prolonging it by more moves that should be needed. Because one thing that happens with this endgame is that if you mess up the order and mess up the technique once, uh, the game is probably already drawn. <laughs> because this, ten this end game takes about 30 moves to deliver checkmate. And if you mess up once, well, <laughs> you'll probably exceed the, the 50 move mark and the game ends in a draw. So you must make sure that doesn't happen. But it's no big deal. It will not happen if you understand these rules. So we want to set up the W. In order to set up the W, which I'll show what it is in a moment. You want to have your king, uh, in this case on f6, so opposite to the black king, on the corner. So if the king were on a1, our king should be on c3. And if we had a dark squared bishop, and the king were, for example, on h1, our king should be on f3. And with this sort of opposition with the kings, what you want to do next is bring your knight in front of the king. So in this case, we want to bring our knight to f7. In all, uh, in all cases, for example, with the king here, we would like to bring our knight to uh, b6, and so on. So we want to bring our knight to f7 with check. So bishop d3, king g8, and knight f7. So we start cutting off the king's squares, and now, once the w is set up, let me just put the next move on the board, king f8, the only legal move for black. Uh, now what we want to do is actually perform the w. And with that, we will successfully drag the black king onto the right colored corner, which is a light squared uh, corner, 
where we can actually deliver checkmate to the black king. Why I, I chose to um, to explain this endgame to you guys like this is because I find it easier to first drag the black king onto the wrong corner and then go uh, from there to the right corner. It is the cleanest way because you have with this W maneuver and the way the pieces are set up, you already have all of your pieces set up the way, uh, the proper way to deliver checkmate on the right colored corner. So we already cut off the edge each square, the king had to go to g8, and now to f8, and now we continue cutting off the king's square. So bishop h7, we denied the king uh, its uh, way back to the wrong colored corner. So king e8 is the only move, and now comes uh, the w. So this is important now. This is one thing, that, this is probably where most people mess up. Here people see, okay, the black king wants to get out to d7. So the obvious way to, to, to stop that is king e6. Now this move would be very much desired, but the problem is that black plays uh, the only legal move they can, which is king f8. And this move comes with a threat of king g7. Why? Now, why do I call it a threat? Obviously, black is not going to win anything with that, nor even uh, get the game to a drawn position or nothing like that. But it will uh, prolong the game as the king will eventually run back to h8 and we would have to start the maneuver all over again. So here we would have to go king f6 because it's the only piece that we have. It's our king that can stop the king from going to g7. So it would be a repetition of uh, this position because the king would go back to e8. So instead, we should uh, cut the d7 square off with our knight, knight e5. And we can see, uh, you, you'll see that throughout uh, the, the rest of this dragging maneuver to the right corner, our knight will do this sort of maneuver, this w-shape maneuver, hence why it's called the w uh, maneuver. So knight e5, we cut after d7 square, and now the black king has two options, either to go to f8 or to d8, both of them will, will be equally fast in, in failing, let's put it that way. <laughs> so let's just put king d8 as the king is trying to get to c7. This is probably the critical line I would say in this uh, endgame. So the king goes to d8 and it looks like it's running away to, d7, uh, to c7 because there is no white piece that can stop the king from going to c7 on the next move. And it is true, that is a true st statement. Here's where the technique really comes in. We have all, all our pieces beautifully set up to uh, drag the king to the right colored corner, but unfortunately, we cannot stop it from coming to the second rank forever. So we temporarily have to allow the king to come to the uh, second rank, and even the third rank, believe it or not, which sounds crazy, but let's see how it works. So here we should bring our king closer, king e6, king c7, and here comes the crucial, crucial part in all of this maneuver, in all of this endgame we must cut the king off from reaching the fourth rank. That is really the uh, the key uh, to win this endgame. Now, how do we do that, right? It looks like the king is forcibly coming to the third rank. That is true. But it is not forcibly coming to the fourth rank. So by some sort of geometry, this endgame actually works beautifully in this case with the white pieces. So we go knight d7 which cuts off the b6 square. We want to force the king onto a light square where our bishop will be able to control its further uh, advancement squares. So king b7, king c8, or, or king d8 are all possible, but king c6 is probably the crucial uh, the crucial move because the black king is trying to get out, right? If it comes to b5, then it will, sure, it will surely come to b4, or a4, or c4, get closer to the middle of the board and delay our checkmate, which could possibly result in uh, exceeding the 50 moves. So here we have an only move case and you shouldn't memorize this move or anything. Oh, you, you should just understand it. So we want to uh, cut the king off from coming forwards. And with that said, there's only one piece that can do it. I think you, you've all spotted it by now. The move is bishop d3. <clears throat> we cut off the b5 square from the king. The knight beautifully cuts off b6 and c5, the king cuts off d5 and d6, so the black king is forced back to the second rank. So here, king b7 or king c7 are, uh, have equal strength, which is about losing. <laughs> the king comes to c7, and now we cut the king even more. Bishop e4, 
So we have cut the b5 square, first the king, back to the second rank, and now we cut the c6 and b7 squares. So we keep cutting all these squares and forcing the king more and more towards the left, in this example, towards the a8, a8 corner. So the king comes back to d8, and it tries to get back to e8 and maybe, maybe uh, find its route back to h8. But we will not allow it. So we establish the opposition, stop the king from coming back to c7. And now, after king e8, the knight controls f8 as well. So bishop g6 check, king d8, and bishop f7. Awaiting moves, awaiting move that forces the king to come to c8 as it cannot go back to e8. Its only legal move is king c8. And here is that little conjunction I showed you earlier. So king c6 would be the desired move. But uh, unfortunately, it, it is not the most accurate, as after king d8, we again are forced to go with king d6. So instead of this, we should play, uh, excuse me, we should play knight c5. Just like in, uh, just, just like a couple of moves back, we played knight e5 to cut off the d7 square. Now we play knight c5 to cut off the b7 square. So after we cut the b7 square, the king can go back to d8 or to b8. For example, king d8, knight b7 check. You can see now we have completed the w, so we went from G, uh, from f7, the w star starts in front of the king, king f7, uh, knight f7 to e5 to d7 to c5 to b7. So, w, so the w is complete, and now it's just a matter of checkmating the black king. King c8 on the move, king c6, king b8 on the move, king b6, king c8 or king a8, it doesn't really matter at this point, the technique is already done, the hard part is all done, now it's just collecting your prize, which is the black king's head. Bishop b6 check, king b8, another waiting move to force the king onto a8. And now there are many ways to deliver checkmate. I just have one put here, knight c5, king b8, knight a6 check, king a8, and bishop c6 checkmate. Uh, now you cannot see the annotations, but this was precisely 30 moves. So from move one, from this artificial position, obviously, your pieces were probably much closer to the center and your king uh, in, a, in a real game, which would make it even easier to deliver checkmate. In this artificial example, it's kind of the hardest, uh, I would say, position, the most challenging to deliver checkmate, as you still have to get your pieces to the middle of the board, you still have to get the king uh, cornered it on the dark corner. Uh, and still, we are able to deliver checkmate in 30 moves. So, let's do a, a recap of the three key steps I want you to uh, uh, understand. King d2, king d7, king d3, we just... The first step is cornering the black king in the wrong colored corner, which is, in this case, the h8 corner or the a1 corner. Obviously, it's easier to corner the king on the h8 square in this example. King d6, king d4, king d6, knight c3, king d6, knight d4, King e7, king e5, king f7, king f5, king e7, bishop b5, king f8, king f6, king g8, knight g5, king h8. The king is on the wrong colored corner, and now we set up the w with our king in opposition with this king, diagonal opposition. Our king should be on f6, and our knight should come in front of our king to f7. To control, uh, to uh, get the king out of h8 and form uh prepare the w bishop d3 king g8 knight f7 king f8 bishop h7 cut off the g8 square king e8 knight e5 not knight e6 uh, not king e6 sorry due to king f8 and the king is bringing back to g7 knight e5 is the correct move uh starting to perform the w and also cutting the king off so king d8 king e6 king c7 and right as the king uh tries to get out Knight e7 beautifully cuts the b6 and c5 squares. King c6 and bishop d3. And with this, we form prison around the king. The king cannot move forward at all. It has it is confined to go backwards. King c7, bishop e4. We cut off all the squares on the diagonal. King d8, king d6, king e8, check. King d8, uh, bishop f7, king c8, knight c5. And we continue to perform the w. King d8, knight b7 check, king c8, king c6, king b8, king b6, king c8, bishop b6 check, king b8. And now it's just a matter of delivering 
the checkmate, which will not take you many moves at all. Bishop d7, king a8, there are many ways to do it from here. Knight c5, king b8, 96 check, king a8, bishop c6, checkmate is one way to do it. So, I hope you all enjoyed this lecture on how to deliver checkmate with bishop and knight against a lone king. It is the three uh, important steps that you should memorize. One, forcing the king onto the, the wrong color corner, which is the corner opposite to your bishop's color. Second, you should set up the w by putting your king on diagonal position with uh, the enemy's king and the knight in front of your king to control the corner square. The third step is to perform the w with knight e5, knight d7, knight c5, knight b7. Timely, obviously, not all in, in, in sequence. And with, with the w, as the w happens, you push the king onto the right colored corner where you can deliver checkmate. Please do not forget this key moment where we, we play knight d7, king c6, and bishop d3, as it is the only the only way uh, that we can forcibly uh, force the black king, <laughs> forcibly force the black king back to the second rank and even back to the first rank, where we can continue pushing it to the right colored corner. So I hope you all enjoyed this lecture. I will leave you with this checkmate thumbnail. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.